All right, so this is a lot of bullshit. There, first of all, there is no reason why you all were not involved in the live event. Not the first one, nor the second one. Secondly, there's also no goddamn reason you all are not in the collision. Something has to give, or I am going to hey, snap. Hey, guys, I am Viper going to squad. lose. How's it going? I've got some news about the Collider Collision. Okay. All right, Stacy Howard, you are going to be at the Collider Collision facing Mark and Draco. Finally. Yes. Yes. For this. And okay. and not that Janine, you are also going to be at the Collider Collision. Yo, yes. that's what I'm talking about. Facing. Facing what? Mark and Draco. Wait, Wait how? Did, and Stacy Howard. It's a triple threat match. Aren't you? That, I'm so glad we get two Viper Squad in here. No, it's going to be great. No, uh, no, congratulations. Four and one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It's, no, it's a triple threat. It. No, it's a triple no, threat. No, I'm so excited. No, it's going to be great. No, no, it's going to no, be no, really no, good. No, two and oh. two I'm going to oh. oh. leave you guys to it. Uh, see you on the collision. It's going to be great. Hey, really hey, exciting. Hey, calm down. Hey, what, hey. What, what, listen, listen. We have some bullshit. We going to figure this out. Let's get his ass off. You're welcome. Uh, I hope I know you enjoyed it. Uh, so just uh, PayPal me uh, at my email address. I'll post it on Twitter. tournament setting i am mark baby carrots ellis and boy what a match we have today we have some faces that may be a little fresh in the inner geekdom but they are no strangers to all things nerdiness christian very excited about not only this match on the field but also the the comical ability of what the interviews might show it's going to be very interesting today because look the reason why we're here is because Mike Kalinowski clearly has something on Thad Williams. What it is, I do not know. I am very curious to find out what that is because I, whatever it is, uh, Thad was set. He was set on a fatal five-way at the collision. That is done. There are now eight matches. We are we are through a lot of these matches already, but now you've got Mike, the answer man, Carlson, who has played once already in the inner geekdom in a fatal five-way, going up against Eric Zipper, Super Zip, as they call him, uh, from the world's finest, the team that has had some great success here already in the team division. I shop at Old Navy, so I don't trust zippers. Christian, they break frequently. Will he crumble under the lights tonight? And as far as Mike Carlson goes, I'm interested to see how well he does. He is the favorite in today's match. What I'm really curious about, how hard he's going to spin that wheel in round two. He set an all-time record for weakness in his last match. Will he be able to top that feat here today? Well, he just have to fall asleep, and maybe he can do that. But I the think other way. it's going to be very interesting here to hear what these two have to say about each other. Here we go. My name is Mike the Answer Man Carlson, and I'm back to do what I do best, which is answer questions. I never thought I'd say this, but I want to give a big thank you to Mike Kalinowski, who, despite being evil now, is very helpful to me personally. I get to play in this Inner Geekin tournament, apparently, so I'm just, I'm just here to enjoy the ride. You know, I'm happy to be here. Well, last time I was in the tournament, I'll be very honest with you, I got screwed, okay? These questions were weird, and I'll be honest, very weird, okay? I didn't like it. This time, I hope it's fair. I know it'll be fair, and I'm gonna win. Being a part of the inner geekdom is a way to show that I don't just have movie trivia knowledge, but I, like, am committed to the geek way of life. 
Eric Zipper. Well, look, uh, I had my handlers explain a couple things about him, but I, I honestly said I, I don't care. It doesn't matter, all right? It's just a warm body as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, he's going to be answering questions, but does he have the flair while he's answering questions like I do? I don't think so. Yeah, Mike Carlson, guy who thinks he's too cool for this, apparently. Like I said, I'm happy to be here. Uh, or as Carlson acts like he can't be bothered, you know? He's here, but he's not here. The sunglasses, the disheveled hair. I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed. I am impressed by passion, not by indifference. Anyone can be indifferent. Look, I'm being indifferent right now. It's easy. Eric Zipper, I want to make something perfectly clear for you today. I'm going to be answering questions, and you're just going to be saying words. All right? I don't want to differentiate what that means. You know. I don't have to spell it out. I'm the answer man. Mike, I've never met you personally, so this isn't personal, but you're going down today. I will take no joy in it. It's just a fact of life. It's just something that's going to happen. I can't control it. It's like the wind. It just is. Um, you know, Carlson, that's what I like to see. You know, Carlson's pretty much kind of nonchalant, saying, yeah. "You know, whoever this person is, I'm just going to keep competing." And you, I, I like the determination in Zipper. Zipper wants to win. He wants to play. He is determined that he can even. I was talking to him behind the scenes. He's determined. He he thinks he can beat Inman. He thinks he can take Inman out. I look at Zipper as kind of a sleeping giant right now. That Carlson may have awoke as Carlson himself fell asleep. Look, he showed up to the studio today. The combination of that interview, the fact he's holding a Dell Taco Cup, makes me think he's taking full advantage of the substances that are legal in our great state of California. Well, we're going to find out exactly. We'll see what kind of theme music comes out to prove it. <laughs> All right, let's go tail of the tape here. We've got Eric Zipper, whose strengths are Marvel, DC, MCU, DCEU. I think he likes comic book movies. Yeah, and uh, zipping up coats. He's very uh, prominent. That's what that. we're going with. Famous that, huh? for it. All right, let's go with it. And then you got Mike, the answer man, Carlson, who just said, don't worry about my strengths. I'll prove it in the ring. <laughs> That's what he said. You want us to not go with the guy's zipper last name? I think we got a lot of jokes yet to hear from that last name. Because he's never gotten that a day in it's his a life. Good moniker. All right, here we go. Are you ready to go? Zip it up, Christian. Let's get it going. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmoda. Three rounds in the Inner Geekdom Division. Introducing first, representing the world's finest, accompanied to the ring by Winston Marshall, Ooh. he is Eric Super Zip Zipper. Here comes Super oh, Zipper. Oh, he's he doesn't like buttons. He only has this position. He broke his butt. He looks determined. <laughs> Winston. Winston is ready to go. Pulling it up. He scares me. This is a not team. necessary. Undefeated so far. They have not lost. They also did well in the in the free for all. And I like that walk right. He goes around the favorite chair because he's thinking one day he might be sitting on that end of the perch. Yep. That is a hell of an intro, unless you're Mickey Mouse, who we know does like buttons. All right. And his opponent, representing Don't Worry About It, with a record of zero wins, one defeat in the Inner Geekdom division, making his return, Mike, the Answer Man, Carlson! And here comes Carlson. Uh, with a soda in hand. Looking like the, uh, the title character from Weekend at Bernie's. He does. Yeah, he does. Absolutely. A couple boos coming in. I don't know if you saw those movies. Bernie was actually a corpse. Yeah, all I like. Through the that. majority of those I films. I like the slow walk that he's doing. It's very consistent to his, his, his aura. It's kind of like when you hit a home run and you just drag out that trot. Carlson right. clearly taunting Zipper and his very energetic intro. Well, we're going to find out exactly what's going to happen. Mark, tell them the rules for the tournament for round number one. In round one of the Inner Geekdom, you will hear 10 questions from 10 different corners in the world of geekdom. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round one. As soon as you hear the question asked to the field, please write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard in front of you. After 15 
nail-biting seconds. We will ask you to reveal your answer. Once we say your name, please show your answer on the whiteboard to the camera. At the same time, you verbalize it in the microphone. I will remind you, gentlemen, of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout this match, as well as a challenge. Remember the JTE rule. If you're not sure you heard a question pronounced rightly, or you just need to stretch out your time to write down the question or answer it in round three, please use a JTE rule. I want to thank our patrons today before we get yeah! started in the match. Ow! Thank you guys very much for helping continue to make this league possible. All right, guys. So here we go. Carlson, are you ready? Yes. Zipper, are you ready? I'm just happy to be here. Then let's get ready to schmodown. Yeah! All right, oh, man. You know, deep inside, Carlson does appreciate being here. He just he keeps it deep with it. I don't think so. All right, here we go. Round number one, question number one in the realm of Star Trek. The Borg Queen appears in which Star Trek film? I uh, have never been to Borg. I did not know that they were a monarchy. I have, this might as well have been written in German. Did you see the royal wedding a couple weeks ago? I know the person. Yeah. Five, <laughs> four. <laughs> I, I do. I do, too. Three. You do? Yeah. Two. Awesome. One. Mike. It's Harry. The answer man says... <laughs> First contact. That is correct. Zipper. First contact. All right, so 1-1. One, one. Here we go. The answer man is correct, as well as the super zip, as we get to question two. All right, your next question. This is from the world of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Somebody not a fan of Peter Jackson's classic trilogy. Your question is, what color hand is the symbol of Saruman's army? Ooh, stumped them both. Color oh, yeah. hand. Stumped them both. Looking for a color. Uh, Crayola, I had the box of 64 when I was a kid. You ever get that high? I don't know. You think cops are going to stab somebody anyway? Six Five, four, <laughs> three. We're two questions in. Two. Yeah, exactly. One. Zip. Red? It's incorrect. Mike. The answer man says black. Ooh, the answer man is incorrect. It's <laughs> white. White is the answer. All right. So All right. no perfect rounds here today. Here we go. Next question is in the MCU. In 2013's Iron Man 3 post credit scene, who is revealed as the person Tony has been narrating the events of the film to? I guess post credit scene in an MCU, that's kind of in the movie, right? Of course it's in the movie. Yeah. It's still part of the duration until the last thing I, happens in the movie. I, I'm sorry, I asked the question. You want to give me a hug? Seen? Five? Yes, I do. All right. Four. Come here. Three. I can't see. It's two. One. Pens down. Answer, man. The answer man says, Bruce Banner. Correct. Zip. Bruce Banner, a.k.a. The Hulk. There you go. There okay, you go. so we're tied up here. 2-2. Two, two. Oh, Next right. question. They know their stuff. Let's see how well they are versed in the world of Harry Potter. Mm. Your question is, simple one. What is Hagrid's first name? That is not a simple one. You would have got that. Neither would have I. No, I, mean, I just meant the asking of it. Oh, it's right. Like, hey. Right, but not getting What's it. What's the guy's first name? Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. I have no, no idea. No Five. idea. Four. I'd be terrible. I know, like I know. Hermione and Ron. Two. One. All right. Pens down and zip. Rebius? How'd you spell it? Redius? Uh, Can't give you that yeah. one. Can't yeah. give you that. And Mike? Uh, the answer man just wrote down Hargold. <laughs> no, also incorrect. <laughs> Hargold <laughs> Tell me what the answer is. Uh, the answer is Rubius. It sound, ah. Mine sounded right, though. Yeah. <laughs> Rubius, I believe that is his brother. Yeah. All right, here's your next question here, and that is in the world of DC films. DC. In Batman Returns, the Penguin's main mode of transportation is shaped like which animal? All right, got a yes or no. Okay, would you rather have gone to the royal wedding or go to the wedding of Hermione and Ron? Hermione and Ron. Fine. Is magic? Four, less pretentious. Three, two, I'm trying. one. Pens down and answer man. The answer man says a ducky. That's correct. And <sighs> zip. Ducky. I said a seal. Oh, and the answer oh. man goes up one here. Answer oh. man. It's yeah. been a while. It's right. wow. been a while. Question. Here we go. Hard to have something float that is shaped like a seal. <laughs> They're known as swimmers. Your next question comes from the world of mixed bag. This is fun. Close your eyes could be anything. <laughs> here it is. What comic book movie includes the following cast. Bruce Willis, Jessica Alba, Mickey Rourke, and Clive Owen. You gave up on love. I got it. Just petered Too out much, early. Huh? I, I took a breath from my diet for him. Right. That's fine. I expelled it. That's what came out. All right. Five, four, three, two, one, and zip. 
Sin City. Correct. Mike. The Answer Man says Sin City. <laughs> Correct. I love The Answer Man says. It Four is a good ACDC tune as well. I like it. All right, here we go. Next, next question here is in the DCEU. According to 2017's Justice League, what triggered the reactivation of the mother boxes? I think Zip will have to leave the uh, table if he gets this one wrong. Known as a uh, DCU part. fan. Well, he's part of the world's finest. Superman shirt. Superman shirts you can get at Target, though. It doesn't really mean you're a right. fan anymore. Something stinks. Oh, wait, Dagnino's in the crowd. Five. Is he? Uh, can I get a repeat of the question? Yes. According to 2017's Justice League, what triggered the reactivation of the mother boxes? And five, four, three, two, one. Answer man. The answer man says Steppenwolf's return. Incorrect. And zip. Superman's death. That's yeah. correct. He knows Ties it up. Superman. Ties it up. So 4-4 four, four here in the first round. They're going kind of toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Mark. All right, your next question comes from the world of Star Wars, movies that everybody loves. Your question is, in Episode 7, The Force Awakens, Maz Kanata says, whose shadow is spreading across the galaxy? I like this question. I like Maz Kanata. Do you? I want to see I more like Maz. Yeah. I would even read books about Maz. Are there any available yet? Not yet. Do you think there will be? <laughs> Five. She's 900. Four. Three. Gotta have good stories. Two thousand. Two. One pens down and zip. Vader? Incorrect. Crossing. Answer one says Kylo Ren. Close. Close looking for the first order. First order. Oh. Which Kylo Ren was a part of. Vader was probably a posthumous oh. fan, but we Could needed first order. Yeah. All right. Next question here, guys. In the realm of Marvel films, Marvel films. Which actor plays Cable in Deadpool 2? You happy with your cable provider? <laughs> I, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, I know because you, you texted me. Yeah, to I don't get my think they, they switched everything. it all up. Literally once a week, I get a text from same, you asking the for same password. password. No, it Five. could be DirecTV, Netflix. Oh, doesn't four. matter. We're playing a game here. Three. Wells Fargo. Two. Stop it now. <laughs> One. Pens down, please. Pens down, please. And we go with zip. That would be Josh Thanos Brolin? <laughs> Correct. And the answer man. Uh, answer man says Josh Brolin, and I drew a picture of him with a big gun. <laughs> there you go. So 5-5 five, five here as we get into the 10th and final question. We would have accepted that without writing Josh Brolin. It looked so much like the <laughs> right. actor Josh Brolin. I know. Thank you. All right. Your last question in round number one comes from the world of The Hobbit. Mm. So the other Lord of the Rings movies. Your question is, what kind of animal does Elven King Thranduil ride into battle in the Hobbit trilogy? I would ride a Ford Fusion. I was testing you if you could stay silent. You failed. Are you not having a good time? I'm having a great time. I was just testing you anyway. Five, four, three, two. Christian, this one. is fun. Pants down. And answer man. Answer man says Thranduil rides a dragon. It's, in it's incorrect. <laughs> Zip. Uh, is it a warg? That's what incorrect. the hell is a warg? No, it's a there good. things in those movies, right? right? A female elk, because that's the answer. An elk, <laughs> an elk is an answer. We have right. to include the elk's gender. Hey, that right. warg's looking pretty in heat over there. Ten <laughs> questions. Ten questions. We got a tie game here of five to five, going into round number two. The answer man and super zip tied up at five as we get into round number two. Mark, how does the wheel round work? It is affectionately known as the wheel round. Yes, Carlson, you have to spin the wheel around at least once. The wheel. <laughs> has 12 slices on it that each correspond to some corner of inner geekdom trivia. Once you settle on your wedge, you're going to get asked five questions from that genre. Each question is worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question, but keep in mind, if you miss it, your opponent can steal. If we ask you the question, you're not sure of the answer, just ask us for multiple choice, at which point the value of the question will go down to one. You'll be provided four options, one of which is the correct answer. If you're not sure of the category you spin at first, you are allowed a mulligan, at which point whatever category you spin, you must answer your set of questions. Uh, we are tied, which means the tiebreaker will go to Carlson, uh, you have the choice of either spinning first or deferring to the zip. I will defer. <laughs> okay. Zip's going to spin. Right. 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 
It's all right, going around. It's fine. All right, round and round it goes, Christian. What's it going to settle on? It is spinning and it's landing on. Whoa! Wow! Oh, big choice. spin, spinner's choice Whatever here. Whatever he wants. So put it. Put, the now, crowd is put, emphatic. Put it to whichever one you want. Just. He's going. Where's go he going? To. He's going to the MCU. He's going to the MCU. MCU. They're here. pretty popular movies. Yeah. All right. Here we go. So it's gonna be five questions. Remember, you can steal in this round, and don't forget about multiple oh. choice. All right. Zip, here's your first question. In Iron Man 3, Sir Ben Kingsley plays an actor portraying the role of the Mandarin. Spoiler alert. What is the actor's name? Trevor Slattery. And for two Bam. points. Big. All right. Question number two. What is the occupation of the woman that Coulson is seeing according to 2012's The Avengers? Uh, she's a cellist. There you go. Two Woo. more points. Wow. Hey. Okay. Said he liked the MCU, he ain't lying. <laughs> With Bruce out of her life and on the run, who played Betty's love interest, Dr. Leonard Sampson, in The Incredible Hulk? Uh, Ty Burrell. Two points. Wow. He's better at MCU trivia than he is at making coats one. <laughs> All right, here's your next one. What is the name of the man that owns the deli that Peter is a regular at in Spider-Man Homecoming? Multiple choice. Is it A, Mr. Delmar, B, Mr. Harrington, C, Mr. Mason, D, Mr. Wilson? A, Mr. Delmar? One point. And then right. for your final question here, final question here. In Black Panther, what is Killmonger's full American name? By full, like do I need a middle name? No. First, okay. first and last. Uh, Five, four, three, two. Multiple choice. A, Eric Johnson. B, Eric Jameson. C, Eric Thompson. D, Eric Stevens. Five, four, three, two. Can I get the options one more time? Eric Johnson, Eric Jameson, Eric Thompson, Eric Stevens. Five, four. Eric Stevens? For one point. Oh, Zipper right. having well, a hell of a round there. All the way around. He knew some right off the Woo. bat. He had the multiple choice others, but he got some form of a correct answer yep. for each and every question yep. posed to him in the world of the MCU. Puts himself up by eight points here. Hmm. Mike Carlson's got to have a big spin and land on something that he likes. Man, Carlson just looks terrified walking up to that field. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen him sweat this much. Let's give it a good spin there. A lot of can. nervous energy. No, okay, no, yeah, no, 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 that doesn't count, once. that does not count. It's got to go around at least no, once. Get, so it back, were, get it back, get it back, get it back to spin. Two wedges away. All right, I'll give you that one. That's a good, that's better than that's the last piece solid of garbage. That's a good, solid winner spin. It was fine. And heroes, do you want to stay heroes, or do you want to spin again? And I think... All right, give it a good spin. <laughs> and I, maybe, I, I just think he wasn't happy with that spin. As far much as better. Much better. <laughs> well, there it goes. <laughs> Carlson. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Eyeing what he uh -oh. spun. It could be another spinner's choice, Christian. That is not Star, Star Trek. Trek. This is what killed him last time. And Carlson with that Mickey Mouse jersey looks like a dejected dad at Disneyland. All right, Star Trek. <laughs> there we go. All right. Five questions in Star Trek. Mr. Carlson in the world of Star Trek. Your first question is. Mm. Who directed the 2016 film Star Trek Beyond? Justin Lin. Two points. Two points. There it is. All right. He's off to a hot start. Your next question. World of Star Trek. In Star Trek First Contact, what is the name of the lieutenant that is assimilated while helping Worf and Picard? Multiple choice, please. Is it A, Yar, B, Davis, C, Hawk, or D, Kelly? Hawk. One point. Gets a Very point nice. for that one. All right. Your next question on the comeback trail. <laughs> what is the name of the ship Khan takes over in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan? Multiple choice, please. Is it A, Constitution, B, Reliant? C, Dakota, or D, Excalibur? Five, four, three, two, 
to Dakota. That is incorrect for the steal. Uh, the Reliance? For one point. point. Big it's steal. A huge Big steal. steal there. Mike Carlson was on the comeback trail. All of a sudden, Zipper throws a wrench into mm. that one. Two questions left for Carlson to make it a game going into round three. Your penultimate question is, in which Star Trek film do Riker and Troy get married? Five. Four. Uh, multiple choice, please. Is it A, first contact, B, nemesis, C, insurrection? Nemesis. One point. It is, in fact, nemesis, and that's a big get for Carlson. One question left. He can cut the lead to three if he gets this one right without multiple choice. And it is. In the movie Star Trek Into Darkness, Bones tests the properties of Khan's super blood on what alien creature? Tribble. Two That's points. Two points wow. Carlson. That's that a good a fight. Lot that was a good track. fight by Carlson Very there. Impressive. Within three. Looked like he had, there was a huge deficit there, almost maybe in the verge of being knocked out. Comes back within three here as we get into the third and final round. This is it, Mark. What happens in the third round? In round three, each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers. That's how we start. Those numbers can range from one to 17. Those numbers are each going to correspond to a movie trivia category up here in the world of inner geekdom. Your first question is worth two points. Your next question is worth three points. Your last question is worth five points. There is no stealing in round three, nor a penalty for missing a question. Uh, Mike Carlson's a favorite, but he is down three, so it is up to Zipper. What are your three numbers, sir? Um, I'm going to go with 12, 9, and 3. 12, 9, and 3. Old numbers indeed. And Mike Carlson. 8, 7, 6. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 876 for Mike Carlson. We start off with Mike Carlson here as he gets to his two pointer. Mike, you're up first, and that is in the realm of Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. What is the name of the goddess, the thuggy cult worship in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? Five, four, three. Mara. That is incorrect. They're going for either Kali or Kalima. Kalima! So now in a chance to tie it. You're thinking of the ride. I know. Yeah, yeah. and to tie it here, you have category number seven. Which <laughs> it's is a good ride. It's a good ride. It's a good ride. Disneyland. Yeah. Carl's been there many times. Marvel movies is your category in number seven. Marvel movies. What is the name of the high school that Peter attends in The Amazing Spider-Man? Five, four, three, two, one. Nothing. Looking for Midtown High School. Midtown High School. <laughs> he nods, and that's, that's how it. we know he is not right. slipped into some sort of sleep. So state. now he has to hit his five, because if he doesn't hit his five. It's over. If he does not it's hit done. his five. And your winner. It is over, and it will be a TKO. <sighs> All right, Mike, here we go to stay alive. Scores and soundtracks Oof. is your final. Game of Thrones composer Ramin Dajwidi also composed what MCU score? Five, four, Thor the Dark World. And your winner uh, by way of technical uh, knockout, uh, Eric Super Zip. For Iron Man. Got a, got a, looking the Iron Man was the Iron answer. Man. It's a good guess for the Dark World because it was yeah. directed by Alan Taylor yeah. from Game of Thrones. Yeah. So the best dark guess you could have had didn't end up going Carlson's way. He played a good match, but Zipper, a force to be reckoned with the today. The world's finest doing it again. The world's finest has not lost, whether it's inner geekdom, whether it's teams. These guys are on fire. Easily could be in contention for Rookie of the Year here in Eric Zipper. Where you got teams, you've got... You've got now Intergeekdom, and now he advances in this tournament.
Big win there, Mark. Yeah, it was almost like a prize fighter where he knew he was going to have to go 12 rounds. Incidentally, didn't have to go that far as he gets a TKO. But in round one, just kind of flicking the jab. Him and Carlson are tied going into the next round. He really found his stride once he got Spinner's choice. That gives a young player so much confidence getting to answer MCU questions. He handled that category like a seasoned pro, yeah. and that clearly is what propelled him to victory. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens next because – the other thing is this is not like a traditional tournament. Normally we have brackets. Mm -hmm. This thing is just absolute chaos. Kalinowski made it that way, is that we don't know where these next matches are coming from. This guy could play anybody. He could play the winner of, uh, he could play Cushing, who just won. He could play the winner of Burnett and, uh, and Mark Donica. There's so many people that he could play. Who's he going to call out? We'll find out in a second. And for Mike Carlson, a very entertaining player for sure. And he does know his stuff. He's not just a comedian who's up here cracking some jokes. The guy knows his inner geekdom. It is not the last we've heard of Mike Carlson. All right, so let's talk to Jen Sturger, who's got both the winner in Zipper and the Answer Man. Here we go. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Jen Sturger here with World's Finest. Zipper, that was an incredible match. You gotta be feeling pretty pumped about yourself right now. I do, it feels good. It was even worth destroying this shirt over. <laughs> I I thought I was gonna regret that choice, but now I, I'm i glad I made it. Yeah, your, your dry cleaner has a word cut out for. Yeah. Look, hey man, look, I got you, I'm so proud of you. I'm going to Marshalls right now, I'm gonna buy you another one, all right? I got you covered, yeah. That's so Did sweet. your voice change from the last time I saw you? I, maybe you saw me when I was doing that like stupid like Dark Knight voice, and I yes, realized I did. that everybody hated it, and my throat hated it, so I stopped doing it. Good call, good call. He's a good teammate. So you got Spinner's Choice in the second round. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty clutch. What made you go with uh, MCU? Uh, I've been a Marvel fan for pretty much my whole life, and so the MCU was like this amazing validation of like, everyone's into this thing I've always loved. And so uh, it's probably the thing on the wheel I've committed the most time to thinking about. So it seemed like the safe choice. Now, I mean, it's arguable that you might be up for Rookie of the Year at this point. Do you feel a little bit of pressure on your back now? Well, now, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I hadn't occurred to me, but now I'm terrified. Uh, no, it's fine. Uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, I just, it's the sort of thing where I just don't know how long this can keep going. You know, I'm bound to lose eventually. And uh, when it happens, like hey, when it happens, I'm going to accept it with grace. Not on my dime. Lose on your own. Get the, not what we playing together. Okay. Use, use the microphone if you're going to talk shit. <laughs> I'm not allowed to lose. <laughs> you're apparently. not. You're not. I'm not. So who do you want next in this tournament? It's kind of this crazy format that we've been, you know, that's been forced upon us. Yeah. So who? There doesn't seem to be much rhyme or reason to it. So I'm, I'm going after the, the big villain himself. I'm going to take down Kalinowski. He wanted to throw everything into disarray. Okay, fine, let's do it. Let's go for it. I'm game. Sounds like he loves him some chaos. Mike Carlson, oh, that was heartbreaking to watch. Are you doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing fine. I'd like to declare victory, honestly. As far as I'm concerned, that was a victory. I answered all the questions and I answered them well. Sure, they may have been wrong, but that doesn't matter to me. That's not what question answering is about to the answer man. It's actually, that's actually how you win the game is by giving correct answers. Well, in my mind, the game is played by saying things in a cool way. And that's what I do. Say things in a very cool way. Okay. So in round two, you spun Star Trek. Yes. Were you a little frazzled by that? I love Star Trek. I've watched all the movies. I just apparently am not that fresh on the topic of Star Trek because I needed a lot of multiple choices. So I didn't, I wasn't scared. I was excited, but a bit rusty. Okay, and then round three, obviously, you got hit with some pretty deep cuts. Yeah, soundtrack, score, composer, who even pays attention to that? The I, showdown. I guess, but honestly, I think I was kind of screwed again. Because, like, really, this isn't about music. This is about uh, cinema, the, the actual image. That's the way I consider it. Well, Mike, you're still very, very loved here by a Thank lot you. of fans. You're a fan favorite, despite having not won a match yet. Um, what's next for you? Uh, look, put me in the main thing. I don't need this inner geekdom crap anymore. I want to do all the movies. Movies that are serious. Movies that are musicals. I don't need just a superhero flying around or a Maz Kanata to answer questions. Give me a, a classic. An Ilya Kazan or a, a, a Battleship Potemkin. I guess that's all like Ilya Kazan if I think about it. I'll answer anything. I don't care. Put me in the main one. You know, the main one. You heard him, Christian. Put him in the main one. Back yeah. to you guys. Well, how about that? Zip just going straight after it. He's calling out Mike Kalinowski. 
He wants Kalinowski. If Kalinowski can win and beat Haybon, he wants Kalinowski. That's ballsy. You take out the guy who started this whole damn tournament. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Zipper, he came out, and he was just a nice, mild-mannered guy. He was right. like, hey, let me help you button up your coat there with the use of my handy-dandy mechanism. And then all of a sudden, I saw it when Carlson had to answer the five-point question. He looked at him with daggers, and he was like, yeah. this is my time now. So he's riding that high. Yep. That's why he calls out a guy like Kalinowski. That is not a match that I would want any part of. Well, it made sense in an interview when Mike uh, Carlson didn't even realize that he was here. No, he so, did not. No, he didn't know he was here. <laughs> Somebody he should home. inform him next time. He thought time. he was yeah. home watching television. <laughs> so, but Mike Carlson will be back. He's one of the most popular players we have, and he hasn't won a match yet. So uh, it, very interested to see where he's going to go. Maybe we'll have him in the singles league or the team league. You know that the guy has an overall just really good knowledge of film in general. So to have him back soon, that's going to happen. But, guys, thank you very much. Now, what is going to happen in this tournament? I have no idea. There's tons of them coming up, so many matches as we lead up to the Collider Collision in July. Man, what a battle. And look, the horsemen are back. Everything is happening. It is an absolute insanity in the time of the Schmodown right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, Kalinowski clearly has dirt on Thad Williams, but not even Kalinowski knows what's going to happen once the competitors get under the white-hot spotlight of the inner geekdom or this tournament. It's been so much fun calling the matches with yep. you. You guys comment right now. What did you love about this match? Did I break the Guinness Book of World Records for the most zipper references in 45 minutes? That is Christian Harloff. I am Mark Ellis. Make sure you guys check out the Schmodown Rundown podcast as well as the movie. The Trivia Schmodown Facebook group. Yeah, and thank you to all the patrons, guys. Really appreciate it. Go to Schmodown. Sorry, how about Patreon.com? Yeah, come slash, on, Christian. I'm sorry. Patreon.com slash Schmodown. Become a patron today. Thank you guys once again, and we'll see you next time. Mr. Napsock, Mr. Napsock. Someone what is this for you? Someone left this for Someone us. It's like a handwritten letter from a fan or a Patreon supporter or something. Thank you, JP. You're part of Take 17, right? What's up, Schmodown fans? Frank here, and it is time for your Schmodown Breakdown. And your winner! It's tournament time with a returning Mike Carlson going up against a rookie to the inner geekdom, Eric Zipper. As we get going through the first round, both players demonstrate they have similar strengths, even though it was somewhat of a low-scoring first round with it all tied up at 5. Into the second round, this is where Zipper really got to open things up and show just how much he belongs in this league. By landing on Spinner's Choice and opting for MCU, he goes 5 of 5 for 8 points, putting some big pressure on Carlson. Now Carlson lands on Star Trek and grinds it out going 4 of 5 for 6 points. Heading into this match, Carlson was 2 of 3 in the Star Trek category. Trailing by 3 points, Carlson was unable to force it back to Zipper as he went 0 for 3 in the final round and Eric Zipper will move on to the second round via TKO. Inside the numbers, Mike Carlson obviously didn't have a great day. He went 9 of 18 and that will bring his overall accuracy through two matches to 56%. Looking at Eric Zipper's debut, he went 11 of 16 and earned 67% of the points available to him. It should be noted that 7 of his 11 correct answers came inside the Marvel slash MCU universe. If you want to find out other stats about this match and from around the league, check out SD Rundown Stats on Twitter. And don't forget to check out the Schmodown Rundown every Saturday on YouTube and the Collider Factory podcast feed. This has been your Schmo Down Breakdown. How's it going, guys? If you didn't know about the Patreon, you guys have a chance to support the Schmodown. Now, myself, Mark Ellis, we've taken over the production. Basically, you guys have 16 tiers to choose from. We're trying to give back to the fans. Go and check it out right there. If you want to support the Schmodown by becoming a patron today, go ahead and do it. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've given us. And, yeah, there's some really crazy tears in there. I'd love to get your opinions on it. Now go enjoy the match. Go do it. It's a good match for God's sakes.